This is the Pooja and Gurdip podcast from 98.1 CHFI Studios in Toronto, Canada. Hey Toronto, this is Ed Sheeran. This is Kelly Clarkson. Hi, this is Brian Adams. This is Adele. This is Madonna. It's Michael Bublé. And you're listening to the Pooja and Gurdip show. It's fun. They're amazing. Well, I... Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me one second. Hello? TMI long distance service? Oh, gee, I, I can't talk right now. Why don't you give me your home number and I'll call you later? Uh, well, I'm sorry. We're not allowed to do that. Oh, I guess you don't want people calling you at home. Uh, no. Well, now you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have all been there, right, where you got a call from a telemarketer. This happened to me recently where I was on the phone and I was calling uh, someone who was supposed to help me with my eaves troughs and I left a message. Not eaves troughs. I know. I left a message and I said, call me back. And I hung up the phone and as soon as I hung up, they called me back. It was a 1-800 number. Okay. So I picked up. It wasn't them. It was actually someone from a charity who was trying to get me to donate. Okay. And you know, like you have that little pause when you say hello and like, you know, right and away. you hear like a click and then they start talking. Yes. Yeah, that's how like, you know. Oh, and they got me. Um, and then, you know, I'm not rude. I'm not about to hang up on them. And I know that they're, it's a tough job, right? It's a tough job trying to sell you on whatever it might be. Uh, this person said I had donated in the past and they were looking for me to donate again. And then went through this whole spiel about how they have this new technology and they really need to fundraise for this technology in particular. You and heard them through this whole thing? I listened to the whole thing. Like how long did this go on? What are we like talking? Like at least four minutes. Oh, okay? man. You got to interrupt and just be like, listen, I got something on the stove. I know. Gotta run. I know, but I felt so bad and it was a charity and this person was invested. Anyway, they, they get to the end and they say, so can we count on your donation? And I said, well... I, to tell you the truth, I actually, I donate a lot to a lot of different charities, but I make all those decisions at the beginning of the year and I've already donated. So call me in January. <laughs> well, I've already donated right. to, to where I'm going to donate. And, uh, you know, I had a similar charity to this one. And as I'm explaining this, he hang up, hangs up on me. <laughs> <laughs> the telemarketer hung up on you? Hung up on me. I'm mid-sentence. I'm like, you know, and it, the technology sounds great and I'm really, and I'm glad you took, nah, gone. Okay, now let me just ask this because you uh, are so cautious that your disclaimers sometimes are disclaimers layered upon disclaimers layered <laughs> upon apologies. And sometimes they take a while. How long were you taking to break up with this guy? Like, <laughs> was this really long-winded? Because if he sensed where the train was going, I, I understand why he jumped there off. There is no excuse to hang up on me. I <laughs> well, I didn't hang up on you. I heard you out. He probably would have preferred if you did just hang up on him because you wasted four minutes of his time and his breath. I guess. He's on to the next trying to get donations. I stood in his way. We got to work on uh, your telemarketing skills. And just, you got to flush the call. We want to know, do you have a funny telemarketing? A marketing story. Yours is like a reverse reversal. I, is it weird that I wanted to call him back just so I could hang <laughs> up on him? <laughs> we want to hear your funny telemarketing story. We know you've probably got them. From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip Podcast. Okay, I recently was speaking to a telemarketer and they switched the tables on me and hung up on me. You got, how annoying were you that you got hung up on? I was mid sentence. You can't <laughs> hang up on me. So we want to know what are your funny telemarketing stories? Emmanuel from Toronto, what's it for you? So I got these two scam calls prior to a donation call and I answered the donation call and I was yelling at them. Oh, oh no. Oh, because you got two scam calls. So you were expecting the donation one, which was legitimate, to be a scam. Ouch. Yeah. And then I started screaming at them and I felt bad. Oh, no. <laughs> and, then, and then you had to donate a large sum of money to make yourself feel better. I was too embarrassed, so I hung up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to get yourself off the list. Uh, Manuel, okay, thanks for the yeah. call. Thank you. Take care. What's your funny telemarketing story? Let's do one more here. Michelle in Toronto, what happened? Quite often we would get these calls for uh, air ducts yep. and it would drive me crazy. Um, so one of the things that I started doing is I just cut them off right away. And I said, I'm really sorry, but I live on a boat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And what do they say? They, they just kind of paused and went, like, pardon? <laughs> and, and then right away I said, yeah, I live, I live on a boat. Sorry, I don't have any ducks. Thanks very much. That's brilliant. Might have to steal that one as well. Michelle, thanks for the call. You're very welcome. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. I wish I'd thought of that in the moment. I think about it like after I hung up and then two days later, I'm like, I should have said I was in a boat. You got to sing it too. Uh, telemarketer hung up on Pooja. That's how annoying you were <laughs> to the telemarketer. Dare? How dare. <laughs> uh, we're asking for your funny telemarketing story. Sandy in Holland Landing. What happened? Uh, I'll tell you, I was making dinner one night and the phone rang 
and my son picked it up and he was about four years old. And then I was finishing the, the cooking and I said to him, oh, who was that on the phone? And he said, oh, it was some guy and he was selling windows and doors, but I told him we had some and hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Uh, Sandy, I'm getting from this you should everybody should get their toddlers to pick up the phone to get the telemarketers to stop calling. I couldn't I had to stop to think about it and I thought <laughs> That's a good answer. You know what? Pooja put Sia and Bodhi to work. You got two young employees at home. Sandy, thanks for sharing that. Thank you, and have a great day, guys. Love you. You too. Bye. And bonus, toddlers just have a lot of time. They have a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> it's great practice. Brendan in Uxbridge, what's the funny telemarketing story? What happened? So I got a call. Uh, from a guy and I was just done with it because I was hearing these calls all the time. Mm-hmm. So he calls me in and I answer the phone and he starts going on a spiel and everything. Anyways, I just start laughing like the Joker, like I'm completely psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, oh, no. like which Joker? Like Joaquin Phoenix, Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson, Jared Leto? Like, like Heath Ledger. I won't do it for you now, but... Uh, oh, please no, do we it have for to hear now. It. We have to hear it. I don't know if I can. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, is this Brendan? Uh, Brendan, uh, I'm wondering if you need your ducks cleaned. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, your ducks. Do you need them cleaned? <laughs> oh my gosh, Brendan, I no love joke. it. Oh, they were terrified. They were, they were like, "What? What? Who is this?" That is brilliant. Uh, and then yes, they did hang up on me. I might have to use all these suggestions. I'm, They're all so good. I'm doing it, Brendan. Thanks for the call. Hey, you're welcome. Oh man, <laughs> that was maniacal and amazing. The Pooja and Grady podcast. From 98.1 CHFI. All right, so look, we love coffee on this show. We know you love coffee as well. It's a morning show. If you're up this early, you probably got one in your hand. What kind of coffee is it? Uh, Today is National Frappe Day. Uh, I know I love coffee. My dog is named Coffee. I clearly don't know enough about coffee because I don't even know what a frappe is. How do you not know what it is? They've what, been around forever. Like, I know it's cold, right? Yeah. But what, what what's in it? It's frozen. It's coffee. It's like a dessert coffee. Oh. So then you have, like, flavors in it. You can get, like, cookies and cream or, like, strawberry <laughs> shortcake. And then there's, like, still a little bit of coffee, but it's more of a dessert. Because I see so many different cold coffee. I'll be honest. I'm intimidated by, like, the cold coffee list. Why? I don't even look at it because I like my coffee hot. <laughs> okay, but me there's, too. But there's too many different kinds. Like, what, what's the difference between a cold, like, like an iced cappuccino and a frappe. Nothing. What's the difference? They're just different names. They're just, they're all, oh, see, bl- that's, see, that's they're dumb. all blended frozen <laughs> coffees, like dumb. frappe and frappuccino. Frappuccino oh, has, frappuccino. it's like a cappuccino, but cold. But and then, then ice but, cap. But then is, isn't that just a frapp, frappe? What? Cappuccino? <laughs> yeah, frappuccino. So <laughs> I named it that. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> so what's a frappe versus a frappuccino? They're just different names. But a it's frappe- the same drink? Yeah, but different companies brand it differently. That's all it is. I, I think it's the confusing. Frappuccino is like a slush. It's it's whipped up ice, right? So they put it in the blender. So Remember they came out like how were 10 years, 15 years ago? And okay. Tim Hortons came up with them. And I I was hooked on them that summer. I had pro- <laughs> on the frappuccinos. I, and I was eating them or drinking them every single day. Basically eating them because eating they're them. So well, true. Thick, they were yeah. that thick, right? And it was like, remember on Seinfeld when they were eating yogurt, yogurt and they, they were thought saying, it was low fat. And that happened that summer. I said, I don't know oh. why I'm gaining weight. It was all the, all they're the like 500, 600 calories, oh, but they were so good. See, that's the thing. I don't want my calories from a coffee. My coffee is like utilitarian. I don't want to, I'm going to get my, co- my calories from food. But what happens if you want a dessert and then you still get coffee in it? Kind of like a win-win. <laughs> the the yeah, furthest I'll coffee. go is like an affogato if I'm on vacation in Europe. Oh, you so fancy. Yeah, <laughs> that's like not a, the same. That's you're I know, but I'm saying in terms of like cream. dessert, I don't want my coffee to be dessert. I I'll mean, do a coffee and a dessert. You give me a slice of key lime and like a black coffee, okay. I'm in. Okay. I thought we were just discussing what the difference was. I don't know yeah. why you're so angry about it. Well, I don't know. The word frappuccino just it's like it's too frou frou. What? It's just frozen coffee. You know what? Uh, this is what I have to say to frappuccinos. I don't give a frap. <laughs> Frappuccino, you're full of frap. <laughs> what is this? Some kind of frap house? <laughs> he does. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip podcast. Okay, I can't say I saw this one coming. Unemployed Gen Zers are going to LinkedIn, and on their profiles, you can add a banner. So right on your your picture, okay, you can add a hashtag and a banner so oh, that you okay. know people know something a little bit more about you. Sure. Okay. And right now, the trend 
for unemployed Gen Zers is to add a desperate banner. Hashtag desperate. Across their picture? Yes. And I guess this is to let potential employers know they really, 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 really want a job. Oh, no. They're desperate for a job. Okay, hold on. This flies directly in the face of a story. I can't even believe I remember this. You brought a story here, I want to say last month. That was, uh, it was advice that for people who are going for job interviews, you should pretend like you've got other offers in oh, yes. play, even if you don't, because it makes an employer want you more if they know you have other options. So yes. this is the opposite. This is saying I have zero options and maybe no skills. Please hire me. Yes. I'm just the messenger, Gritty. If I just bring you the stories, they don't have to, all, they don't have to always align. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's the opposite of what I said a couple of weeks ago. But this, but this is, is a new show. This is a new show. And a new day. This is what they're saying. And, I, you know, I don't know that this looks attractive to me. Like, if I'm an employer, no. I'm not going, oh, desperate, I want you working for me. I've never been given the power to hire anybody, and that's probably for the best. <laughs> but if I were in that position, I think you lose. If I know an employee is desperate, a potential interviewee, mm-hmm. you have no leverage. Guess what? I'm telling you your work conditions. I'm offering you the lowest True. possible salary tier. Yep. I'm, you're getting minimum vacation because you're desperate. And But maybe that's... That's the deal. Maybe they don't care. They're like, I'm desperate. I'll take whatever. I just need the money. And then I'm going to move on anyway. Maybe that's that's something to it. But it's a little too honest for me. Like if this was your dating profile, let's say. This is where that <laughs> may work. You think so? Better than for employment. <laughs> Hashtag desperate. I mean, you match up a couple of desperate people and ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> I'm desperate. You're desperate. Let's yeah. swipe. Let's be desperate together. Uh, um <clears throat> I, I mean, I do like the transparency for the dating, but I think we should be able to change up the hashtags. Like, you don't necessarily need to be hashtag desperate if you're dating. Like, uh, make it unique. Make it your own. Make it like your hashtag, I'm a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hashtag toxic. <laughs> hashtag baggage. <laughs> Actually, mine would probably be hashtag, I make my own oat milk. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, don't put that one on. Why not? Yours should it's be, unique. Yours should be hashtag pie, pie. I love pie. <laughs> And then they know you're a math guy. Okay, that's true. And I, and I genuinely like yeah. pie. Oh, oh, hashtag master abbreviator. Uh, you, ab- one, you abbreviate that everything. That one could go sideways <laughs> if they read it too quickly. Uh, Steph, what's yours? Mine would probably be hashtag way too busy. Yes. <laughs> so why, why are you on the app? I know, that's why I'm way too busy. Don't bother me. <laughs> so are you looking or are you not looking? I don't know. Just whatever comes my way, maybe. But just to know in advance, I'm way too busy. That's better than desperate. Uh, Blair, you've been married for many years. Would, what would your dating hashtag it be, though? It would be the worst. It would be hashtag married. <laughs> <laughs> I get no bites. <laughs> or, I don't know, if I understand psychology, I think you'd get the well, most maybe, bites. I right? was <laughs> wearing the wedding ring to the bar can help your... Help your game. This is true. Okay, so even if you are married, just pretend you can play along. What is your dating profile hashtag? Forget LinkedIn. If you had a dating profile and you had to put up a banner, what would the hashtag be? The Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. This is the Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. What is your dating profile hashtag? We ask you this because unemployed Gen Zers are adding the hashtag desperate. They're adding these banners to their LinkedIn profiles. And we thought, I'm not sure this is going to work for employment, but also when it comes to dating. Might work if you're looking for love. I don't know that desperate would work, but what does that hashtag look like? Mm -hmm. Um, Mine would be, I make my own oat milk. I think girls would love that. Obviously. Um, Cheryl and Oshawa, (laughs) what would your dating hashtag be? It would be plants are better than people. Oh, I That's like that. One. Plants are better <laughs> than people. Tell us about it. I just feel like sometimes people are a little too much and uh, plants don't talk back. They're lovely. <laughs> I love it. Yep. So, Plain so, simple. so maybe you should be dating a ficus. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Cheryl, thank you for the call. Thanks, Cheryl. Awesome. Have a great day. It's all fun and games until that ficus asks you to put a ring on it. And then what? <laughs> and then what? Uh, what also, you learn to talk? <laughs> yes, we're getting a text to 981981, and we're asking you for your dating profile hashtags, including this one from Anita in Toronto. Must love Scrabble. Listen, a board game night, yes. that'll bring you together. It also brings out the worst in people when you lose and you flip the board over because of the triple word score. But think about the vocabulary that you have oh, as a result. Yes. No using the dictionary. That's cheating. Um, Frankie <laughs> Flowers from Breakfast Television. What is your dating hashtag? Hopeless. <laughs> oh, Hopeless? No. <laughs> Why didn't you go with runway model? <laughs> that would be actually two hashtags. Hashtag <laughs> hopeless, hashtag confused. <laughs> Is that because it's just so difficult in the dating world right now that it feels hopeless? Well, after years and years of dating experience, 
uh, now, right now, you're, you're a little jaded at times. Mm. Right. And, see, and even seeing my son, who's 18, going through this world of the dating, he's kind of hopeless and confused, just like, just like his dad. It's genetic. Well, you got to set the example, Frankie. I'm going to amend yours to hopeless romantic. How's that? Oh, yeah. Uh, hopeless romantic, hashtag confused. <laughs> looking for your dating hashtags you can give us a call at 416-872-CHFI we're getting some texts as well pooch yeah one more here um this is from robin brighton hashtag i can lick my own eyebrows oh dear hey <laughs> rob's popular and we're gonna leave that one alone okay uh, time for one more call tywo from brampton what would your dating hashtag be leave me alone <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> why are you on a dating app if it's leave me alone <laughs> I am a six forty guys in the morning, but but these days my wife and I we drive together, but she's driving me crazy for, for you guys. <laughs> for us, what? No, what I mean, she want to listen to ninety eight point one. I want to listen to six forty, but she's winning. Well, I, I hate to say it, we're gonna side with your wife on this one. <laughs> we're on team ninety eight point one. Hi. Hi. What's your wife's name? Do you really want to know? Yes. Sure. Okay, I'm going to spell it. U-Y-O-Y-O-U. Y-O-U. You got it. I didn't even write you it down. You got it. You are the best. Maybe I should, I should switch listening to you guys now. <laughs> hey, all right. Yes, that's all it took. We're going to quit while we're ahead. <laughs> From CHFI Studios. It's the Pooja and Gradeep Podcast. Today's National Body Language Day, and this is something, whether we are aware of it or not, we are all saying a lot without saying anything. Isn't it, what is it, like 70% or 80% of communication is nonverbal, something mm-hmm. like that? It's Might true. Even be higher. Yeah, and actually, I know it bugs you. It, it actually scares you a little bit how well I can read your face. Yeah, you read my nonverbal com- communication better than anyone that I know. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, it's for the better. To, you also have to stare at me, though, for like four <laughs> hours a day, which no one else has this to do. This is true. This is true. I try to be observant of it, although I'm not fully aware of the things I do because I'm very animated. So, like, my reactions to things are so over the top. But, like, really, it's just it could be about anything. That's the problem. Your baseline is over the top. So <laughs> yes. it's hard to decipher. Yeah, like, I could be watching paint dry and have the same reaction as, like, like ooh. ooh, as, like, you know, opening a bag of chips. That yeah. I love. Same reaction. Watching paint dryer, watching one of your reality shows, same face. Yeah, but do you actually believe in the tells? Like, you know, when people are like, oh, the arms are crossed, the body language said I'm closed, like, or, you know, an eye roll. Does an eye roll really mean an eye roll these days, or do people just eye roll because it's, you know, in fashion? It has become very, uh, yeah, part of the sort of mainstream uh, nonverbal communication. I think there are things we do that definitely give us away. Like, if you're maybe having a dispute with your partner or something, I've been told I've eye rolled and I didn't even know I really? eye rolled. It was like a subconscious movement. Eye roll uh, or like side eye? I think an eye roll. Oh, I've been wow. told that I've, I've eye rolled before. The arms crossed, I disagree with because sometimes I'll just be sitting down, arms crossed because it's comfortable. Yes. I think if it's also accompanied by tense shoulders and you're actually stressed out, it can be, but yeah. it's not necessarily bad body like, language. Like if you've got like shifty eyes, you've, we've all seen the shifty eye guy, right? Who just, who cannot make eye contact. Oh yeah. That to me is, you know, there's a, there's a lot to lot to unpack there. But yeah. you know where you see this the most is when you're on a Zoom meeting or on a Teams meeting and you're virtual and everybody's I, on mute. I find it hard to detect on those in person i can read people's body language oh. i actually find zoom tough a little bit tougher there was one time you and i were on a zoom chat together <laughs> not just, just us it was the whole team everyone at yeah and i saw your nostrils flaring and i was like what's going on and i realized you were trying to hold in a yawn you texted me you're like <laughs> you're like just yawn <laughs> I'm like, are we keeping you up, <laughs> bored? Uh, yeah. How do you see? Okay, first of all, I'm concerned that when there's a screen with like 18 boxes on it, you're so dialed into <laughs> mine that you're seeing, oh. which is like four centimeters by four centimeters. You're seeing my nostrils flare. What's wrong with you? You think I'm paying attention to the meeting? I'm just paying attention to what everybody is doing. I'm looking at their backgrounds. I'm like, yo, I'm like, oh, what are they looking at, or why are they distracted? I'm so I love people watching, so I love seeing people in those boxes. I really hope our boss is listening. He now knows. <laughs> On our Zoom meetings, you are paying zero attention. You're people watching. Well, sometimes, sometimes you catch the person on Zoom who's checking themselves out. Have you ever seen those people? They're oh, looking yeah. at themselves on the camera. Oh, absolutely. And they're like fixing their hair. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I mean, if we're talking about Zoom behavior, I mean, you often take the meetings in your pajamas in bed, which is like <laughs> everyone's at work in a professional setting. You're like laying back, glass you of notice? wine. Oh, absolutely. Oh, we know what's up. The Pooja and Grady podcast from 98.1 CHFI.
I saw a thing, actually, a study that said speaking in front of a crowd is considered the number one fear of the average person. I found that amazing. Number two was death. This means to the average person, if you have to be at a funeral, you would rather be in the casket than doing the eulogy. Classic Seinfeld. Wondering what your biggest fear is and have you ever faced it? Blair, your biggest fear? When I was a kid, I was terrified of going to swimming lessons. Ah. And there was a time where we had to learn to swim in the deep end. And I just said, nope, not interested. And the swimming instructor just took me and tossed me in the deep end. He forced you to face your fear. He forced me to face my fears. And how'd that go? Uh, It was all right for a bit. Okay, you uh, made it. You're here. I did, yeah. And um, I'm not a big swimmer now. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I can swim, but I just... uh, eh. You don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it as much. If you swim, you're swimming to save your life, not for leisure. Correct. Okay. Correct. Got it. Steph, biggest fear? Um, I would say roller coasters and it kind of like was a roller coaster. It was up and down. So when I was really young, I was terrified of them. I didn't want to go on them. And then as a teenager, I went on like some smaller ones, not legit roller coasters. And then I didn't like them again. And then when I was about 19, I'm like, I want to go on roller coasters. And I went on like a small one in Ottawa with my brother. And then I was terrified of them again. (laughs) And then when I moved here in 2001, I went to Wonderland and I went on like 10 roller coasters in a row and it was fine. And then when I was done, I'm like, I'm good. You're good. You've conquered it, but you don't need to keep revisiting it. I don't need to go on them anymore. I love that we could uh, conquer both of your fears by just going to Wonderland. We just sent Blair to Splashworks (laughs) and Steph to the Mindbuster. (laughs) Yay, you're cured. Uh, Mine is somewhat similar to Blair's. Mine was, uh, and I think I've talked about this before, Sharks, uh, because of the movie Jaws. This is silly, but this is what changed me from uh, the bathtub to the shower because I thought Jaws was going to come through the bathtub when I was five years old. Uh, but, But as an adult, like I went to Croatia with some friends in 2016 and we were staying on a boat and so much of the trip was jumping in the water mm-hmm. jumping in the Mediterranean Sea and this was completely in my head because that is a, oh, no. uh, a of course I googled it are there sharks in the Mediterranean Sea and the answer was yes there are sharks in the Mediterranean Sea yeah, what are the chances of encountering one? Extremely low, but of course that's in my head of as we're jumping off a boat and we're frolicking in the sea. So I had to just, I don't know how well I faced it. I just tried not to think about it because I'm like, I don't want to miss out on this trip. I'm going to partake. How was it? It was fine. I didn't get, I didn't see any sharks, Yeah, but it was definitely in my head as I was swimming around. It would have been different if there was a shark. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I, I, think <laughs> I would have like, been like, trip's over. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Pooja and Gurdip podcast. Listen to Pooja and Gurdip live weekday mornings from five to nine. Only on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's Perfect Music Mix.